Oh, okay. So they're both about this little girl who is about eight or nine in my imagination. And she's a very spunky, very um, curious, but also generous um, little girl who lives with her mother and her father and her siblings. Uh, you know, one of which is Sheila, who's about, we don't know, an indeterminate baby age. <laughs> and so who she has to sort of look after sometimes. And then Ravi, her bigger brother, who's like a big pain. Um, like she keeps calling him a right royal pain uh, and te teases her endlessly and things like that. So she lives in a, you know, I, I imagined her as a very modern girl who's just growing up in today's world in a big city in India. And, but she gets into all kinds of adventures and uh, you know like seriously into a lot of trouble because she doesn't know how to follow the rules um, and so she's breaking a lot of rules all the time so, <laughs> um, so this book Maya Saves the Day is a set of sh uh, three short stories uh, which is sort of unusual in that you know it's not a complete um, so they're like individual chapters and so they're about one is the first story is about an escaped tiger um, which she imagines um, I, mean, I mean, she. it has, according to her dad, it has escaped from the zoo and, and then she finds out that it's hiding in her house and tries to get it out of her house and, and then what happens, you know, you'll see. And then the second story is about how she goes to a mall and she loses her parents. In the sense, she like, her parents sort of walk all away and she thinks that they are lost and creates all this big hangama about around that. And the third story in here is about these puppies who need a home and how they try to like adopt these stray puppies and what goes on with that. So those are the three short stories in here. This one uh, is about, you know, Maya wants to become a monitor, like she wants to have responsibility of the cupboard. And then she's given a key and then given who Maya is because she's also scatterbrained and, you know, <laughs> um, she loses the key and then is accused of being a thief because something disappears from the cupboard and all those shenanigans that go on after that. And so she gets into a big mess in her school. Okay, so in this one, Maya saves the day. She, you know, she, she has a very, she's an extremely confident young girl who thinks she knows a lot, you know? Uh, and so that's what gets her into trouble. I mean, she doesn't, um, sort of, she doesn't get afraid in, in, in some sense. Though, of course, in the first story, she, um, I kind of feel we call her spunky because basically she is afraid of a lot of things, but she has the um, sort of the grit to overcome whatever she's afraid of. So like, you know, in this book, she says, I'm, she's afraid of crows. She's afraid of the dark space behind mama saris in the cupboard. She's afraid of she's afraid of the tiger she's very very afraid of the tiger um but then when he finally shows up and she has to save sheila because sheila's crying every moment and she's trying all kinds of tricks and she's very creative in that sense so she's trying you know she like takes out the hose and sort of tries to hose the tiger off or <laughs> things like that so she's she gets into trouble one because she's like a little overconfident at the same time she's also really afraid um, and which is, I think, what most kids are, right? They, they sort of get scared, but then they also try, okay, let me try and like overcome this. Um, so the, the trouble she gets into, for instance, at the mall is because she's like wandered off from her parents, but she thinks they wandered off from her. And then so she decides, oh, I'm in, I need to get them back. These people are so awful. They, they got lost. How could they get lost? So it's kind of a reversal of kids getting lost, but Instead, the parents are lost, so, you know, so she tries all kinds of creative ways to get them back. Um, um, I don't want to, like, give the whole story away, but, you know, it's, 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 she's smart enough to notice her environment and sort of use what's in the environment to sort of overcome her problems. Um, and with the, with, even with the last story, which is the lost puppies, you know, there's a real sense of, um, in the sense, I wanted to bring... Uh, memories of what happened with my own life it, to a certain extent like one of the indelible memories I have is of watching these dog catchers come in and take away dogs who were like around our school and so for me that was such a 
like a terrible memory in some sense. So I sort of put that in the book. And so they have to save the dogs from the dog catchers. And that's why they hide the dogs in their house, the little puppies. So again, she's very, you know, she's resourceful in that sense. She fights for what she wants and she somehow manages to sort of make it work through all the problems or whatever it is. So, <laughs> and, in, and in this one, again, you know, she's, she's developed a little more. This is much more set in a school. She wants the responsibility, but maybe doesn't have the, you know, the wherewithal to step up for the responsibility. But then she also has like a, a so-called frenemy, which is her uh, kind of nemesis Nidhi in the classroom, who's really goody two shoes, completely different from what Maya is like. And so she has to, you know, that, that girl's always criticizing her. And so she has to be, uh, you know, say, no, I'm, I'm not like you, but I'm going to be myself. At the same time, she has to sort of manage all these, you know, everything when you're so young, everything seems so big and troublesome. The world is so full of trouble and you have to learn to negotiate the world. And I think, you know, she uses her brains and her smarts to sort of negotiate the world at the same time I love throwing things at her you know like the oh the gum bottle disappeared and the principal standing at the edge of the corridor and yelling at her and she's she's not allowed to run and there are all the rules of the world that you have to live in but then how do you circumvent all that and sort of get what you want so <laughs> yeah So, um, you know, they are basically sort of small chapters in the sense of chapter book and uh, they, they sort of have bite-sized pieces of the story, right? So, they, 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 and, and the conflict or what we call, I mean, I'm using fictional, like the language of fiction, starts really early on. The, the, the characters are put into trouble like say chapter one, right? You, you have a very clear sequence of uh, of events in the sense chapter one will sort of introduce the setting and the character and where she lives and who she is and then chapter two you know the troubles start and then she has to learn to uh, sort of overcome those um, you know problems um, the other thing also is that it helps that the language is of a particular at a particular level and you know you take the um, I particularly did that with both these books that I took the the, I was very conscious of who I was talking to, so I would use different synonyms for the same thing uh, in sentences. You know, this was a, a big, humongous, colossal, things like that, like problem. You know, I would say, so, to, so that kids got the idea that there are synonyms for uh, various words and sort of got a larger vocabulary through reading this. Um, um, and also in the sense that, you know, they, they, things happen very fast. So every chapter is a little tiny little chapter and then you're sort of pushed on to the next and the next and the next. So they are kind of plot led in that sense, you know, though we do wander about a bit and I do have points where there's, there's like sort of an indulgent quality to sort of what she sees in the world and how she sees it and how she imagines like the cotton candy or pink clouds or, you know, things like that. So. But at the same time, because they're divided into chapters, there's kind of sort of that imperative of plot that pushes the reader forward. So especially the young reader, you know, there's a need to sort of keep on reading. And we're very conscious of that fact when I write it in chapters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Maya, as we said before, is an imaginative, spunky, um, girl she also gets into trouble and so young readers love that idea of you know of sort of the the world going into like having problems but then always getting solved right by with with their own she uses her own mind and her own uh, sense of right and wrong to sort of solve um, you know whatever problem she gets into um, I think they would enjoy that the fact that there's there is a way that the a reader is led into like this whirl of, of troubles and then led out of it but by using her own um, you know her own confidence and her own mind she she sort of solves these problems the other thing is that they see themselves in 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 these books I mean in, in any book in any fiction you have to see yourself to some extent right and so they see a girl who's just like them, like ordinary, you know, living with parents, whatever. She's not, doesn't have superpowers or anything like that, but she's just a, 
a, like an ordinary little girl who actually is able to sort of live her life to the fullest. You know, she has fun, she has friends, she has uh, a fantastic time. At the same time, she's also being, um, you know, getting into all these scrapes just like them and has, uh, has fun doing it. I mean, these are fun books. These are books that, you know, they have a sense of joy in them and that joy comes from who Maya is, how she sort of perceives the world. So I think there's a, kids would get that sense of joy and fun and, you know, it is, it's like, um, you know, this is a, I, I believe that you need to have fun. Like you have to have, you have to enjoy. Everything's not a lesson, you know. Um, there's no big moral like thing tied up with a big bow at the end and presented to anyone. It's just it's 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 it, they are fun at the same time they have hidden qualities of like oh, what do you do? How do you stand on your own two feet? How do you solve the world? The, you know what the world is throwing at you? How do you live in harmony with your friends and uh, how do you live in your family and in, and still manage to go to school and do all the things that you have to do but have fun doing it. Sort of, so. <laughs>